Now on Toledo News this morning, tragedy in Toledo will soon mark the anniversary of a monumental day in our history. The details coming up. Plus, Memorial Day events, the emotional ceremony and annual parade happening today. And party in the Old West End, getting you set for this year's festival and parade. The news starts right now. Good Saturday morning. My name is J.D. Jefferson and welcome to Toledo News This Morning. We start with a check of your first forecast and a traffic update. As far as this weekend's forecast goes, expect today's high in the lower 70s and a low in the upper 50s. There is the potential for scattered showers. The traffic flow on southbound I-75 between Wales Road and Glenwood Road has undergone a lane switch to the left two lanes for noise wall and slope work, as well as final surface paving. This work will continue through the summer. Next weekend, an Old West End tradition returns. Here's my interview with resident Daniel Finkel to explain. Would you be able to give me an idea of what the Old West End Festival and Parade is about? Yes. Uh, so the Old West End Festival is a way to showcase the Old West End, which is a great historic neighborhood in the city of Toledo. Uh, we kick that uh, festival off uh, really sort of officially with the parade. We have some activities on Friday, uh, but the parade is the big uh, kickoff to the festival on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Um, and then throughout the weekend, we have music, we have food, we have children's activities, of course, the historic home tours. And this is just really a walkable neighborhood that's, that's fun to explore. And then on Sunday morning, there's actually the 5K run as well. All of that information about festival and the activities can be found online at ToledoOldWestEnd.com. Um, you can register for events. You can register to be a volunteer. It takes hundreds of volunteers to put on festival. And it's not just neighbors in the neighborhood that do that, but people come from all over the city to participate and help out. Kind of describe to people what that's been like and seeing that this neighborhood grow and change over these last few years. Yeah, the Old West End is obviously, it's an old neighborhood. Originally, it was just the West End, and it was a suburb of the city. You know, people lived in the city, and then they might live out in the West End. Well, now we call it the Old West End because many of these homes are 100 plus years old. Um, it's really developed as a fairly diverse community. It's economically diverse, uh, culturally diverse, socially diverse. And the, the festival is really our way to show that off to the city, to say, really, we have a lot of pride in our neighborhood. Um, this is a neighborhood that's really a tight-knit community. And this is our opportunity to invite others in and show them what we have to offer. All you need to know about the event can be found at ToledoOldWestEnd.com. The city of Toledo and a group of local organizations will be hosting an event to promote good health in our community. Talk About What We Walk About will be held Saturday, June 11th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Frederick Douglass Center on Indiana Avenue. There will be free health screenings, CPR training, guest speakers, and other programs. To learn more, visit the City of Toledo's Facebook page. Parents, listen up. An event happening today is a great option to get your kids out and having fun. Metro Parks Toledo is hosting a youth fishing event from 8 a.m. to noon at Cannonball Prairie Pond, located at the namesake Monclova Metro Park. The free event is open to youth ages 17 and under. Those 16 through 17 will need an Ohio fishing license. Today, there's an opportunity for you to reflect on the lives of those who gave their life for our country. It all begins with the annual Memorial Day Parade in downtown Toledo at 10 a.m. That will begin at the corner of Summit and Monroe Streets. Then at 11.30 a.m., you can attend a ceremony at Civic Center Mall right behind the safety building. I can tell you from experience, it's an emotional one. Today from noon to 4 p.m. at Toledo Bikes, located on Washington Street in downtown, you can partake in a celebration of all things Bike Month. There will even be a kids' bike parade. To learn more, visit the nonprofit's website, toledobikes.org. It's the day that can simply be described as one of pain, anger, and disappointment. It's the afternoon of May 30th, 2020. A peaceful protest begins in downtown Toledo at the corner of Jackson and North Erie Streets. It was organized following the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis by a police officer. But just as night began to fall, the Toledo Police Department decided that enough was enough, injuring protesters with wooden bullets and inflicting pain with tear gas. It's a day that won't soon be forgotten. 
Toledo is known for its murals and amazing artwork that we have here in the Glass City. Any given neighborhood, you can find something. And joining me this morning to talk about his incredible repertoire of work is David Ross, a local artist. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. And yourself? I'm good. I'm great. So give me an idea of some of the pieces that you're responsible for here in the Glass City. Um, me, when I, like, when I do projects in Toledo, like, most of my mural projects are, like, they come with the impact project, you know, like, I won't just do something because somebody could commission me to do it. Most of the artwork that I did come with, like, a, a high impact message or addressing some social issue that, um, the neighborhood is in response to the neighborhood. So, example, one of the, um, murals that the people see a lot is on Junction and, what is that? Junction and Dork, which um, was a project that me, myself, and the Junction Coalition came up with and, and, and um, commissioned artist Christopher Rodriguez. And that mural was in response to the, um, the, lead, the lead lines being contaminated in this neighborhood. So that uh, mural said the, um, the roads that grew from the concrete needed fresh water to grow. And that project right there, like, you know, resonated with a lot of funders and people that opened some doors and conversations that could they cause some new change. Why is it important that we have these art, art pieces here in the community? Because, you know, it really does beautify a neighborhood. But like you said, it also sends a message. Well, it's important because, you know, most most of the um, most important ingredients to a viable neighborhood is vibrancy and um, synergy. And these murals kind of like send a message of synergy. And that's what we want. We want to let developers and people who, you know, stakeholders know that this community has synergy and people who work together. That's how we can send that message out. For me, art has never been something I've been great at. So that's why I chose a different path. But you, however, are very talented. And your work really does, you know, it really pops out when people see it. So when did you realize your talents? Um, well, so for the most part with me, it's not so much about it's the artwork, it's really the project. So <clears throat> me personally, I, I so happen to know how to draw and do murals, but the, the impact and the, um, the community engagement is what I like to specialize in. And that's the part that's most important to me. Anybody can be a creative, you know, so what, what I try to do is be a creative and Creative is, is like the new way for being an artist, you know, because in all actuality, you are a creative, you know, so whether you call yourself an artist or not, you're still a creative. So doing the work that you do impacts community and it impacts people. So that's what makes you a creative, you know what I mean? So that's what I do. I specialize in being a creative. For sure, for sure. And I mean, you really do have a lot of creations and it definitely does, you know, change communities and it really does open up people's minds. So how can people follow along your journey and the journey of these different neighborhoods that you'll be working in? Well, you um, you can go to the artscommission.org or um, the junctioncoalition419.org. Those are the two organizations that I work with. And, and what's you know, next? The project. So what's next? Let me see. Um, Juneteenth Parade. The Juneteenth Parade is the next big thing that we're working on. We're trying to um, just show that solidarity is here in, in the city of Toledo and just um, that we're here. So that's, that's my next thing coming up. I'll be following along and I encourage everyone else to follow along. And David Ross, again, a local artist, thanks for joining me this morning. Appreciate it. We are diving into the issues Sundays at 11 a.m. right here on YouTube. For allergy sufferers, this time of year isn't all fun in the sun. Those itchy eyes, sniffly sneezes, and stuffy noses can be treated with nasal steroids, according to the Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Sandra Hong. Making sure that they point them outwards, um, right nostril, right ear, left nostril, left ear, because we want to avoid the nasal septum that runs down the center. Because if you point into it, you can get nosebleeds. There are also over-the-counter medications that can be prescribed. But if they don't prove to be a big help, seek help from your physician or an allergist. That's all for the news this morning. Have a great Saturday.